So today we're going to look at something fun in the form of pseudo lectures. And by themselves, a pseudo lecture isn't really that fun. Basically, it's just a warning message before you run pseudo. But we can change the file that it's getting output from and have a little fun with that. And then a bit later in the video, we're going to look at a program to actually convert a image into an ANSI string so we can output it into our terminal. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually bring up our terminal. And if you don't know, you can modify your sudo as file, which is basically your sudo configuration file with a program by the name of vice sudo. So if we just run that, this is what our boring sudo prompt looks like that you've seen hundreds of times. So you just have sudo password for and then your user. So we'll just put my password in and then jump into that. If I put the password in correctly, that is. So we'll try that one more time. There we go. So now depending on which distro you're running, this command may or may not already be included. So it might just be commented out depending on what you're on. On Arch, I think it's just not included at all. So basically what we're going to be doing is changing this line right here. So default lecture equals always. So this will actually let us output the basic lecture and bring up another terminal just because of the way that I have my um, permission set up. Once I put my password in once, I don't need to put it in again in the same terminal session. But basically, we'll just see what this looks like now. So now if I was to run vi sudo vi sudo again, now we can see we have this bit of lecture here. We trust you have received the usual lecture from the local system administrator. It usually boils down to these three things. Respect the privacy of others, think before you type, and with great power comes great responsibility. So that's kind of boring. But there's some other stuff that we can do with this. So you may have noticed that when we changed it before, but I have these three lines in here that I've got commented out. So I've actually created a couple of custom lecture files and these aren't anything special whatsoever. They're just basically regular files and they've got a weird extension just because the one that I downloaded a while back had the weird extension. So I was like, you know what? Let's just continue the theme, I guess. You don't actually have to. It can just be a regular text file or it doesn't even really need an extension. Just anything you can output to your terminal will work perfectly fine. So if we just cat one of these files, like let's say the flaming sheep one, for example, as we can see, literally nothing special about this. It's just a regular text file. So if we were to say uncomment this one, and then we have to save and quit this file, and we go sudo vi sudo, just because that's what we've been running this entire time, if I can spell. Now we have this message before we actually have the command prompt or the, um, the password prompt. So let's just not bother putting the password in for that, and let's change it to a different one. So put the password in here now. So we have the sudo as dot lecture and we have the stallman dot lecture. So I'll save the stallman dot lecture for a little bit because that actually relates to the thing we're covering a bit later in the video. So if I save that one now and we just quit that again and we go sudo vi sudo. And now we have a sudo woody reminding us to be careful while we're actually using sudo. So I found this one online. And this is what most people tend to do with their lecture file. You're not going to take it seriously unless you're like a system admin, basically. If you're not a system admin and you're actually setting up a lecture, you're probably just going to put something dumb there like I do. And this is the one that I run just generally. So let's try a different one. Let's go to the Stallman one this time. So let's just have a look at what this one does. So this one's a little fun. So <laughs> it has a, a beautiful picture of Rich's Stallman on it. Now, why would you want to run this? As I said, there's no reason for it. It's kind of just a little fun. But hey, maybe you're wondering how I actually made this picture because all this is, if we just have a look at that file, if we just cut that out, that's not what we want. Maybe if we less it. Yeah, less will probably work. Etsy slash. So cat actually will properly interpret the characters. Let's try it with something that's not gonna do that. So let's say with less. So this is what the file actually looks like. It is this massive string of basically ANSI escape characters to print out all of those colors. Now, I'm not a crazy person. I didn't write all this myself because this, this is dumb. No one would ever want to write this all by themselves. This is where you have a really nice program that'll do all of this for you. So I don't want to keep scrolling through that. There's way too much there. So we're going to look at a program by the name of PixTerm. So there are a bunch of programs that'll do this, but PixTerm I found does it probably the best way. A lot of programs don't use ANSI escape characters to draw. They'll use like Unicode blocks or they'll use um, ASCII characters. I don't really like those. The ANSI drawings actually look really, really good. So if we have a look at this, 
they actually look really good. And obviously if you have like a bigger terminal, it's gonna be even higher resolution because basically all of the ANSI blocks are pretty much effectively just really big pixels. So yeah, it looks really cool. So let's have a look at how I actually made that picture because it is pretty simple. So first up, let's have a look at the manual page or the help page for pix terms. So I don't think it actually has a man page, but it does have a help screen. So there's a couple of different options in here. So we have the option to set the dithering mode. So dithering, the way that I understand it, seems to be the sorts of characters that it uses. So by default, it'll use these like ANSI colors, but you can also get it to use the Unicode blocks or ASCII characters as well. Personally, I'm a big fan of just using the ANSI blocks. However, it's doing it by default. I'm not really sure how it's handling in the background, but I like it with the default setting basically. Depending on your terminal, you might have to use one of the dithering modes though, and also depending on some other stuff. On ST though, the basic mode does work. So you can also set the color for transparency. So I just leave that as default because all of the images that I'm using don't have a transparent background. But if you're using one that does, maybe you wanna do something with that. Or I guess you could just leave it as it is. You can also disable the background color, which is optional and only available when in dithering mode and it'll also ignore the matte color that you set in the previous option. And the last thing you're probably gonna care about besides, well actually, you're gonna care about these two as well. The next thing you're gonna care about, I guess, is the scale method. So by default, it's gonna use resize. So what resize does is it'll resize to actually fit in the entire terminal. So it'll use up the entire window space basically but you probably don't want that. You probably want it to actually be set to fit so it doesn't ruin the aspect ratio of the image. So I use fit mode and then we'll also try out fill mode as well. The last thing you're gonna care about, especially if you don't want the image for your pseudo lecture to be massive, is the actual size of it. So the TC options and the TR options. If you set it to fit and you change just one of these, it'll automatically work out what the other one should be for you. So it will actually maintain the aspect ratio for you. So what image are we actually gonna use for this? So I've got one pre-downloaded, so let's just go into my downloads directory. And I've got this picture in here called kyoichi.jpg. So what is this of? So this is a certain a certain uh, kyoichi pseudo from initial D. So, hey, what a, what a great time to use this picture, I guess. I can't think of any other time that I'd wanna use that picture. <laughs> Anyway, let's just use this with the default settings and see what happens. So if we just pass the path in, so downloads, Kyoichi. So as we can see, it'll stretch it to actually fill up the entire terminal. So as I said, you probably don't want this option unless you really want like a stretched out picture of Kyoichi Sudo. Maybe you do. I probably wouldn't want that though. So before we get to resizing, let's actually have a look at some of the actual scaling options. So let's try out the second option first. So second option is fit mode. So basically fit mode will make it maintain its actual aspect ratio, but fit it into the terminal. Whereas if you go fill mode, I believe fill mode will actually maintain the proper size and then just print it out and whatever happens, happens basically. So it'll very much depend on which terminal you're running, but on ST, it kind of breaks after it goes up the past the top. Now, if you're running something like Kitty or your XVT, it's probably gonna work fine. ST is a little weird with scrolling, it, especially when it comes to stuff that's not really standard like this. So we're gonna stick with fit mode because fit mode looks a, a little better in my opinion and actually fits on the screen properly. So let's try out some of the actual sizing options. Now I mentioned that if you just set either TC or TR, it'll actually set one of the other options by itself. So if we set the number of columns to 40, so using fit or fill along with one of the sizing options, will also set the number of rows. But obviously if you don't have either fit or fill in there and you just have it at the default setting, then it's not gonna set the other one. So if we just remove that option for now and we run this, as we can see, we just get a really stretched image. So if we then also set the number of rows to let's say, I think 20 is roughly accurate. So TR 20. That will give us roughly what we wanted, but we're gonna stick with using the fit mode just because it's a bit easier and we don't have to set both of these options. So, and then obviously if we were to change the image to something else, then we wouldn't have to work out what the new aspect ratio is. So we set that back to that. And yeah, that was basically what we had before. So let's actually have a look at the options again and see if there's anything else that's too interesting. So we go to the help menu and let's have a look at some of the dithering modes, I guess. So by default, it is set to zero and that's just using the basic ANSI characters. And I think this probably looks the best. 
But if for whatever reason your terminal doesn't work properly with the ANSI characters, you might want to try out with blocks or with ASCII characters. So if we set the dithering mode to one, so that'll use blocks instead. So that, I'm not a big fan of this. Let's actually just make it its uh, default size as well instead of scaling it down just so we can get the most amount of detail possible. So this is what that looks like with using blocks instead of the ANSI output like we were using before. So as I said, you're probably not gonna wanna use this unless you really have to. On bigger images, it's gonna look good. Like on, on here, it actually does look really good for some of these images. But when you're using a fairly small image like this, it might be a bit of an issue. So let's try out the second dithering mode. So that's just gonna be using ASCII characters. And once again, this can look good depending on what you're doing. We just remove the compositor. Yeah, this, it doesn't look horrendous, but I would much rather use the ANSI output if I have the option to use that. So let's just go back and have a look at the help menu again. Was there anything else to look at? Ah, oh, right, the actual colors and the no background. So let's stick with this ASCII output and then set this to no BG and see what that's actually gonna do. So is that any different to what we had before? So we remove no BG. Yeah, so it actually will remove the, I guess the background color. That's interesting, I hadn't tried that before. It's kind of difficult to see on this image just because it's so dark, but between the two images, it kind of lightens the background. I, I don't know if you can really tell on the recording. I can see it a little bit on my screen though. So now I've had a look at most of the options that are available in PixTerm, but how was I actually making that Stallman image and how am I actually running that as a lectures file? So let's have a look at the actual options that I was running when I made that file. So basically what I did was PixTerm-S2. So I'm using the second scaling mode. So I'm setting it to fill mode. So if we just bring that image back up, downloads Koichi, if I can spell it correctly. Okay, so I've got it set to fit mode, but this is obviously way too big. So what we can also do is set the actual size of it. So you can set the number of rows or you can set the number of columns. So I'm just gonna set the number of columns and I'm gonna set it to 40, 40 works. So this will give us a much, much smaller image. Now, obviously you can't output from a command directly in the lectures file because it's, it's not actually executing anything. All it's doing is basically just catting it out. So all we have to do here is just output this to a file. So let's just put it in my home directory for now and then we'll move it to where it needs to actually be. So let's just call it kyoichi.lecture, for example. So now we should be able to cat that out and we can see that'll cat out the exact same image. So all this program is doing is actually just generating a string. So if I just bring that up in my less, for example, so I run that, yeah, I don't care, it's a binary. So this is what it actually generates. So that massive thing I showed you before with the Stallman image, this is everything that it actually generates from the command. So now we can actually move that into where it needs to be. So it doesn't actually need to be in the Etsy directory, but we'll just put it there just because that's where all the rest of them are. So sudo move koichi slash etsy slash koichi dot lecture. Okay. <laughs> Forgot I had the Stallman image there. To put that in, yes, okay, cool. So now we can go back into vi sudo, sudo vi sudo, and change this one from being Stallman to being the Kyoichi one. So now that we've saved this, all we have to do is I just open up a new terminal, sudo vi sudo, and that will now output the new image that we have. So <laughs> is there any reason why you'd wanna do this? No, none whatsoever, except it's it's just kind of fun. Maybe you wanna have something a little less ridiculous looking than what I have here. Maybe you wanna use like the, the pseudo Wudo one I had before. But ultimately, if you're not a system administrator, there is no point to be using your lectures file, but it's just a little bit of fun. So I reckon that's pretty much everything that I want to talk about in this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this or maybe things where I actually cover things that are, you know, actually important and not just random changes you can make to your pseudos file like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. 
down below I've got all of my like social links and my discord and my telegram and anything like that I've also got my support links down below so if you want to support the channel then I've got my patreon and a couple other support links down there so feel free to use any of those but obviously as always you don't have to use any if you don't feel like it and lastly, I've got my alternate video platform, so my BitTube and my library. So feel free to go to any of those if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.